with Filipinas as an accent. Uh, for the operator, please take your time. Can you hear my voice? Yes, please. Excuse me. Is my voice clear? Clear. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, then, then I will continue this event. Um, okay. Thanks to the operator. So we are going to the next agenda. In this part is 
opening speech from Mrs. Selviana as Dean of Business Faculty of Bina Insani University. Uh, for Mrs. Selviana, are you ready to speech? Yes, Hafiz. Thank you. Okay, uh, please take your time. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much, Hafiz, for your opportunity to me to uh, yeah. deliver my uh, speech. Uh, hello, everyone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi. Good morning and magendang umaga. Is it correct, Miss Gladys? Yes, ma'am, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, everyone. And how are you doing, uh, Miss Gladys? Fine. A little bit nervous. Fine. Good. Okay. <laughs> very good. Uh, I'm very glad to have you here, ma'am. Uh, I really appreciate that you could schedule your time to be our guest lecture today. And here we have students from management, accounting, administration, management, and secretary or office administration. I wish that the material that you will deliver uh, today uh, will be uh, give them an advantage for them. Okay. And then student, we have valuable time today and a honorable guest lectures, Dr. Dr. Gladys Evidente, uh, uh, who will present the topic of personal manage, uh, finance management. Let us listen carefully, take your valuable time. I'm sure that the material that will be delivered will be very valuable and able to increase your knowledge and insight about what personal finance management is and i hope this class also will become an interactive class between lecture and student and also student please do not hesitate to ask all about the personal finance management and don't worry about your english because here we have abdul hafiz to assist you you can ask in Bahasa and uh, Hafiz will translate in English. Okay. Because uh, you know, uh, Miss, that we are speaking Indonesia, so uh, uh, not so often to practice in English. Maybe our student will have difficulty to ask you something. But don't be shy because uh, Miss Gladys will understand our situation. Okay, student, deal? Okay, uh, thanks to Ms. Felipiana for the opening speech. Um, um, okay, Thank, thanks for Ms. Felipiana for the opening speech and motivation. Uh, so let us go to our next agenda. In this part is the main agenda of this event. It's lecturing from Ms. Gladys Evidente about personal finance management. For Dr. Gladys Evidente, uh, are you ready for the material? Yes, sir. Okay, and we, we will start now. Shall we start? Um, okay. Or later. <laughs> okay, uh, then um, please take your time. Thank you. Um, good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning, ma'am. Clearly, Miss. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay, so um, let me share my slides to you. Sorry, ma'am. Your voice not. Yeah. Okay, um, can you see my slides clearly? Clear, uh, okay. yes. Okay, so good morning once again to Very the clear. 
Uh, yes, to Dean Selfiana, to the administrator, to Professor Apriani, and to the rest that are here with us today. Also to my colleagues here from ISATU. So today I'm going to discuss personal financial management. So personal financial management is actually more of an individual's personal management and practices of his or her finances. This is not something that we usually um, taught to our students, but this is more on personal. Okay, so Okay, so the lecture outline we will going. I'm going to discuss the personal finance, personal financial management and its importance, money management and its philosophies, our spending pitfalls, and some financial management tips that I hope could help us um, save and budget our money. Okay, so so how you handle money is actually how you handle your life. Why? Okay, so there are so many things that we have to consider when we handle our life. So does our money. Okay, so first we have, we should have a good personal financial hygiene. Like your money, we're in your practice good hygiene. Like your life, we're in your practice good personal hygiene for healthy living. You also need money. Your money needs to be taken care of as well for it, for it to grow. Okay. So it takes commitment and practice. When you handle your life, you also are committed to reach your goals. The same with money. If you need to have a bigger money or a lot of money someday in the future, you need to practice, practice on how to get there and to achieve your objectives. And the last, you need to have to develop an overall financial plan. So financial plan, you can start with setting your objectives. What do you want to do with your money? What, what are you trying to achieve? So for how long are you going to do it? And how are you going to get there? As you get there, will you be able to save the amount that you wanted to have in the future? Okay. So if you can see the picture here, the tree, like our lives, will not grow if you will not nurture it. You need to water the plants free to go, right? So the same with our money. We need to nurture it. We need to water it. We need to take care of it for it to go. Okay. So in doing your personal financial management, you need to assess first your current financial position situation. Okay. So, so you check on your family financial profile. So who among the family members are working? Your parents, your brothers and sisters, what are they doing? Can they help you if you need something, if you need some money for your future investments? And personal financial checkup, how about you? Where are you working right now? Can it help? Are you working in a government or a private organization? Is the pay stable? Is it, it, is it paying regularly? Okay, so to... If you can check on the, on the picture, this is you need to have a balance, both of your life your, and your financial life as well. So what is personal finance? So when we say personal finance, sorry. So when we say personal financial uh, finance, it includes all the financial decisions and activities of an individual. So when we say all of it, so how do you budget your money? How do you, do you have any insurances for your future? Mortgage planning, okay, your savings, do you have any savings? How about retirement plan? Do you have any retirement plans? If not, this is all about personal financial finance. Next, so it also involves analyzing the current financial positions. You need to project the short-term and long-term funding needs. Like for example, if you're a student right now, you need to have, for short-term, you need to have something for your allowance, for your short, short um, tuition fees, I mean. And for your long term, so what are you planning to have later on when you already work? So you need to probably to have a car, to need to have a house for yourselves and your family later. And how are you going to execute the plan to fulfill those needs, considering especially now that we have this pandemic? So how are you going to have those money? And it primarily depends on one's earning. So how much are you earning right now? As a student, how much is your allowance? Is it enough for your cost of living? So cost of living, that will depend on how much is the 
price of basic necessities now, the commodities, your food, your for your project, and your personal goals and wants. So what do you really want? So do you prefer to have branded products or inexpensive products? Which do you think is preferable for you as a student? Okay, so learning to keep track of money coming in and tailoring the use of this money to fit expenses provides a systematic way in utilizing the, uh, your income. This is according to Joseph Wellner. So you need to know how much money you have and is coming in or in the future you are going to have for you to know how much will be allocated for your expenses and for savings as well. Okay, so personal financial management. This is the process of controlling your income and organize your expenses. You need to have a plan for you to know exactly how much will be allocated for each of your expenses. I know most of you are studying accounting and you know it is reflected in the income statement, those expenses that we, you are going to have and you are having right now. Okay, I don't know on your part because on our part, we usually reflect each of the expenses, okay? So financial management is you need to manage all of it so that you will not be short of money either. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Okay, so what are the importance? Why do we need to study personal financial management? Why do we need to have the skill of this? First, it makes us understand the true value of money and how it works. If you know how to manage your finances, you know how much money you have, you know how much money you are going to buy each of those you wanted to have. So how much money, how many backbreaking hours do you have to work for you to buy certain things that you wanted? Okay, so you can make the money work for you or you can have it buy for something for yourself. Then we have, it enables us to properly organize our spending, our spendings and in, in savings. If you know how to manage your finances, you know how much money you have to spend and how much money you are going to save either on the bank or at your house or wherever it may be, as long as you are going to save something. Then, it makes us establish clear financial goals so you can assess your priorities so line them up according to either it is long term or short term set these goals what are your goals in life your financial goals specifically so when you set your goals use the smart objectives so when we say smart it should be simple or specific simple i want to have a car that is a very simple and very specific okay goal smart it should be measurable so you can measure, yes, how much is that car? So you can measure the amount. It should be achievable. Can you achieve that? If you're a student right now, can you achieve that? Maybe not right away, but who knows sooner, okay? And it should be realistic and relevant. And the last, it should be time-bound. You know exactly when you are going to have this money for you to be, to be clear of these financial goals. Then it creates money machines. Do you know that if you have, you as a student, when you know that you're earning something, for example, you make projects for your classmates, you know, it makes you want to have more. So if you know how to manage your finances, it makes you want to have, yes, I can do these things. This will add up some money for me. This is additional income. So you think of other projects like investments, like the entrepreneurship nowadays, which is very common, especially those who are into online selling. You as a student can do that. My dear students, this is very common to us here. So if you know how to manage your finances, you can those money that you have saved, you can invest it somewhere because idle or frozen investment will not take you anywhere. So you need to invest it, okay? <clears throat> and it improves our standard of living. Why? Because if you are now financially independent, it makes you worryless, stress-free. Okay, look at me, I am stress-free. No, I just smile. Actually, no. It's because we need to improve our standard of living. We need to have somehow have an idea that you wanted to be financially independent in the future. It's not something that we do in just one click of the head. You need to somehow look for it Okay, in the future. Okay, so money management. This is more about the usage of cash. So, so of cash or your income or how much money you have right now. So how do you budget it? How do you save, invest, and spend it? So this is how to manage your money or your cash specifically. Okay, so the philosophies in money management. First, you have to take the long-term approach. 
pearls. What do we mean by this? It is not easy to say a million pesos or a million dollars or a million something in our currency. It's not easy. We are not born with a golden spoon in our mouth. So how is it? It takes time to, you need to master your life skills first, like cleaning your home. You don't wake up or that you already know how to clean your homes. Eating well is not as easy as you have to swallow your food and leave it to your stomach to digest it. You need to chew on your food. So me taking the long-term approach, you need to master your life skills first. And this money management will be as easy if you already master it, how to take care of it, how to manage it. Living frugally isn't a punishment. So what do we mean by this? Okay, so this means that everyone should live inexpensively and use luxuries as a treat. So meaning we don't have to buy expensive things. We will still live even if we don't have those things. It doesn't matter how much is that. For example, we wanted to buy a watch. A 3,000 peso watch and a 300 peso watch will tell the same time. It doesn't matter as long at least as the function and the purpose is the same. The same with your car. If you buy an inexpensive car and a and a an expensive one, it will still take you to your destination. Only that, of course, probably the expensive ones will take you faster. Okay, so like this example, if your income is on at least five hundred thousand a year, so you can buy a car worth okay 250,000 or lower next so live below your income level years before this is the the philosophy is about live within your means but now it was modified always live below your income level so do not be when you say live within your, your means if you earn 20,000 pesos you are going to spend much less or around 20,000 you don't have any savings left but now the philosophy is to live below your income this means that you have to check that your expenses must not be above your income it must never be for you to be able to live the next day of your life so make to live the next successive days before the the next salary will come in your income level has a role to play in cv why because, of course, if you have a bigger income, you have the potential to save big, right? Of course it does. But this does not mean that if you have a bigger salary, you, are, you will live a more comfortable life or a comfortable retirement. No, it does not say so. Why? It's still in money management. If you know how to manage your money, there is a tendency, if you have a, a low salary, you can still live a good life you can still retire comfortably so don't don't worry just because you earn not much still manage your money for you can you will be better than others too so earn much but then doesn't know how to manage their money okay okay so what are the spending pitfalls so spending pitfalls this is usually for the girls for the women for the females this is how why we buy useful stuff and how to stuff it or how to stop it i mean so this is more common to us women. First is we have the bandwagon effect. The bandwagon effect, this is where, like for us girls, when you see others who are in with the fashion right now, in with the current trend, you wanted to buy that as well. You wanted to be in with a group of friends because you want to buy what they have. You want to be with the current, or oh, what's the current uh, technology for CP, what's uh, for cell phones, I mean. You wanted to have what we have for you to be in with the group. But is it really necessary? You don't need to be with them. You don't need to buy those expensive stuff. What's important is, is it necessary for your life? Is it needed? Do you have money to buy these things? So this is the bandwagon effect. Okay, next we have impulse buying. So impulse buying, when you're emotionally stressed, okay. so when you're emotionally stressed, you don't, please don't shop, okay? Because when you go online and click, just click because you are angry, you are depressed, you will be surprised as, as to how many have already added to cart. No, please don't shop when you're stressed. This will, because the stress will only get better when upon seeing you have already so much purchases that you can afford to pay. 
Okay, so think first before you click those buy me icons. Think, do you really need it? If not, okay, cut it out. Okay, so next we have the last for the spending pitfalls is the sale and promotions. We girls, when we see these flashing lights with discounts, okay, sale, uh, it makes our eyes bulge. We wanted to, oh my God, you wanted to buy those things because they're on sale. If you see this 50% off, 70% off out here in the Philippines, especially this pandemic, there are so many with 70% off. But no, do you really want it? Do you want? Yes, but need. Do you need it? You have to think, if you don't really need it and you have nothing to use, nothing used for it, please do not buy. This we know, we as the faculty of business, we all know that this is just marketing strategies for fast sale, isn't it? So just marketing strategies. You as business students should also know that this is just to attract attention of the shoppers and those of the customers. But really, if you don't need it, don't buy it. Okay, so buy only what you need. So how about the financial management tips? So first we have, these are just the tips for you to manage your money. Okay, so you need to budget your money and pay yourself first. Why? What do you mean when you say to pay yourself first? You as the worker should also enjoy your salary. Why? You won't be able to enjoy much if you see that you don't have enough, you don't have something for yourself. But please pay yourself first. You are the ones who are working for this. So every payday, pay yourself 10% of your wages. 10% is so small. If you're earning 20,000, that is only 2,000. And you won't even see that you have already taken and saved and kept the 10%. Okay? So we have here below is the prosperity formula. This is most of the financial advisors had given to us and more of my research. This is income minus savings equal expenses. Okay, so upon, upon okay, now having your income, okay, so get the 10% savings and your expenses can be controlled. So make sure that those budget for the expenses just your expenses will be just there. You, you must not be, you must not spend beyond it, okay? So here is the prosperity formula. So please discipline yourself to live below your budget. Okay, so I'm sorry for that. Okay, so you need to discipline yourself. And pay yourself first. You need to be happy that you have something for yourself. Okay, so in prosperity formula, this is very effective actually if you know how to manage. So always please, upon having your income or receiving your salaries, get the 10% and budget the rest for your expenses. Okay. Okay, next we have... Understand your true earnings and how they are taxed. We as faculty, we must understand how much we are earning monthly or weekly or by monthly. I don't know how much or I don't know of the period that you are that you are being given your salary. But you need to know how much allowable deductions are being deduct are being taken taken from your salary and how are you being taxed. So here in the Philippines, we have this tax calculator. This is our basis for the compensation and how much tax rates are being okay, applied to us. So this is just a sample. I don't know on your part on how do you do it there, but this is just a sample. So we as faculty, we need to know. We need to know how much are being deducted from our monthly salaries for us to be able to budget our money and know how much is coming in for the next month or for the next PD. Okay. Next, we have be proactive with your mortgage. What does this mean? <coughs> um, this may, means when you pay your mortgage, start small. Don't be so ambitious as to pay a big amount upon the first few months. Start small today. Slowly, when you have already, when you have already, when you are already earning enough, then you can increase your payments.
So I'm sorry we are having unstable connection. Okay, so when you have already when you're already earning enough or you get promoted, then try to increase your payment. So make it a little bit bigger as long as you can afford it. Then so manage your debts. This is very important. Many of us here are into debts. More of the teachers are into debts, but then this is very manageable. Okay, so what do you do? So to avoid to avoid over indebtedness, it's crucial to ensure funds are available to pay your bills. So make sure that pay those debts with higher interest rate first. Because when this, if you take a look at it and compute these um, higher rates, you'll be surprised as how as to how much it is. Sometimes the interest rates are bigger than the principal amount that you have borrowed or you have you are indebted. To know it is bigger so you need to be very vigilant about this before you engage into loans and debts check out the interest rate first okay so number five we have the build a baby emergency fund anywhere i search there is this always this emergency fund that we see what is this other than the savings that you have other than the savings that you have taken out the 10 percent that you have taken out the rest of the money you have is for the expenses. If you still have something extra after you have expend your money, okay, keep it for your baby emergency fund. So this is usually at least five to six times your monthly expenses or monthly salary. You need to have this for emergency purposes, okay? And like I've said earlier, live below your income level. So create a budget and list your expenses all even the very small details of your purchases make sure that you list it so that you will not overlook something and think that you still have enough money always list everything if this works for you oh hopefully it works for you because others are tired of listing but hope it will look this is very helpful after. okay so one of my personal finance best practice is this so stop spending money on things you don't need and start making your dreams come true today so to our dear students this is very true if you are not buying things those are unessential not essential not really needed right now take care of your health don't don't buy things that is unnecessary you need to save some money for yourselves and your for in your and for your family okay and um, before I finish my discussion, reflect on this. Okay, so life is like a coin. You can spend it any way you wish, but you only spend it once. So that's all. This is more about financial management values. And I hope you have, okay, learned something from it. Thank you. Okay, uh, thanks for Dr. Gladys Evidente uh, for your great explanation. Uh, so we are going to the next part is Q&A session. Uh, for anyone want to ask, you can raise your hand and open your mic. Thank you. Okay, uh, the first question is from Nenny. Uh, the question is, how about us as students who don't have income, who don't have much income yet to start investation? Uh, that is the question. To start, and yes, so again, to start investment. The last part yes. of your uh, question. As a, yes. As, as a student who don't have much income, uh, how to start an investment? How to how In, to start an investment, investment? Uh, as a student uh, who don't have much income? Yeah, uh, okay. that's okay. the question. 
Okay. Okay. So as a student, but I know most of you are given allowances by your parents. So save, save. If you can, like, for example, as I have told my students, instead of riding the public utility vehicles, if the school is not that far, they can take a walk. This is an example of savings. If you don't have that much money for the for the internet, okay, still save the money, okay? So you don't have, you can you can connect their classmates, you can use the data of your classmates. So for you who are living in the same area, since we are in the social distancing here, so my advice for those who are living in the same area, so they can have, they can share the loads for their cell phones if they are having online classes and save those money. And also for investments here, I, I advise my students that they can, actually this is an introduction to interpret that we have so i ask them to innovate a product sell it online and then i make sure that they have these income statements and the profit should be divided equally among the members so this is the start of investment so more of this profit when accumulated can be a good a good amount certain amount and i, I hope that they can also practice that in your country Okay, uh, thanks for Dr. Gladys for the answer. How, how, how many? Uh, is it enough? Yes, enough. Thank you, Miss. Okay, um, the, next, you. the next question is from Rahmadiena. Um, how, how many credit cards should people have? That's the question, Doctor. Is the Come again. How many? Uh, how many credit cards should people have? Ah, okay. um, you see, on my part, actually, I he, out here, huh? out here, we don't, I don't encourage students to have credit cards. But for us, but for us faculty who are earning, one credit card is enough. One credit card is enough. If you are a good payer, actually, the credit card company will increase your, um, what they call this one, your, you know, the limit of your credit card. It will increase your limit if, it, if you are a good payer. So one credit card is enough. You don't have to have much credit card because it will, you will, your debts will only increase. Consider those, if you can, if you will not be able to pay the amount on time, Sometimes the penalty is bigger than the principal amount. So what do I do if you have a credit card? Make sure to pay much more than the than the minimum amount that they. For example, if you are if you have ten thousand peso bills and the minimum amount they require is only five hundred pesos or five hundred, increase that amount because what you are paying is only an interest. So try to pay much more than what they required for you to finish or finish paying your credit cards. Belum di unmute ya, Fis. Thanks, Doc. Thanks, Doctor, for your answer. Um, Okay, the next question is from Betaharia Aditya. The question is, how do we know whether our way of managing finances is efficient and effective? Thank you. That is the question. The knowing how, if it is effective or efficient, you need to monitor. It is not easy to just say if you are having a profit right now for the first month. It is not, it is not a, an indication that it is effective. You have to monitor. It should be continuous. So the process is continuous. If if you have seen the actually it is it is I think it, I have noted this in one of the videos in my class the story of Jack Ma. So you need to invest. You need to invest at least three years. Three years for you to know that your business is making money okay if after three years it's not making money it's time for you to stop so it's not easy it's just it, this is not just one shot that it is effective or efficient you need to monitor if you are making any progress if it's not making any progress then maybe something is wrong with your system or the way you handle your finances Uh, Joe, sir, please. 
I can't hear you. Yeah. Um, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, thanks for doctor for the answers. Um, I, we are going to the next question. And the question is from is from um, Anissa. And I think the question from Anissa is same as Yulia Injani question. So, um, so the question is like, how to manage our financial in pandemic situation like this moment um, with limited income to fulfill the needs? Please read the question again, sir. Okay. Um, the question is how to manage our financial in pandemic situation like this moment with limited income to fulfill the needs. Um, how to manage our financial in pandemic situation. Okay, so we all know that this is very difficult times for us, not just one country, but most of the countries are having financial difficulties right now. For you as a student, what you can help is to try to help your parents by doing this online selling. You are into the business, you are in the business, um, you are in the business course, board business program. So what you have to do is innovate something and sell it online. There is no need for you to rent a house in the city or in the province or in the town. Sell it online, sell it on Facebook or to or to your set of friends you can like for example these um it, this is called gakanin in here so these are foods um sort, sort of delicacies most of our students are selling it online and deliver it to our to our to those who ordered so these students can do the same this is very helpful even a small amount is very helpful to families okay thanks Thank you, doctor. Um, the next question is from Diana Putri Pakpahan. Um, and the question is, um, how, how about the plan? How about the plan to manage my own finances while I don't have a job? I am just the one who is finances financed by my family. Please give me a solution. If you this, are the one who is if you are the one who is financing your family, what is your job? How can you finance your family if you have nothing to do? Can you please ask him that question? Because this is a little bit, um, Anna. okay. Please ask him if he doesn't have a job, how can he finance his families? What is he doing? Okay, um, thanks doctor for the answer. Uh, I think we are going to the next question the next question is from santi agustina the question is how to handle buying behavior because i like it not because i need it answer how do i handle what um the, the question is how to handle buying how to handle my behavior because I like it, but not because I need it. So if you have enough, then you can buy whatever you want. That is if you have enough, okay? But if you, if you have some financial concern, don't buy it if it is non-essential. But if you have some more money, you have some savings and you wanted to have these things, so you can buy it because you like it. Okay, Santi, uh, can you open your mic to respond to Dr. Answer? It is now. Hello, Santi. Okay, uh, well, well, we are going to the next question. Uh, the next question is from Alia Salsabila, and uh, oh yeah, uh, for for Alia Salsabila, can you open your mic to ask this question? Yes. Wait. Okay. Uh, can you ask this question? Hello, ma'am. Good morning. 
can you hear me? My yes, 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 good morning. Ah, yeah, it's very clear. Okay, I have a question. How to make a good and efficient plan in saving uh, in the pandemic? Because actually, it's so hard for me to to choose a good plan in saving. Thank you. Okay, so I know it is hard. Like I have said earlier, and I have answered these questions. If you have, if you know, if you have an idea on how to start your own business, an online selling business, are you a student? Yes, I am. Okay. So as a student, like I have advised my students also here, try anything. You are in in a business program, in a business course. I know you are are you are oriented at how to make how to have your own business, even the simple the simplest procedures. So think of something, think of the resources you have right now. Like for example, if you are living in a province, what resources is available? With these resources, try to make things out that you can sell online, online or to your friends or to your neighbors. This way you will be able to make some money and help your family. Um, do you hear me, Miss Alia? Yes, I'm hearing you. It's clear. Thank you so much for your answer. You're welcome. Okay, thanks to doctor for the question is from uh, Nenden University. Can you hear my voice, Nenden University? Please open your mic to ask your question. Hello? Okay, um, we're going to the next question. It's question from Nita Ramadani. Hello, Nita Ramadani. Can you open your mic? Yes. Okay, uh, please. Please ask your question. Hello, Miss. Happy to join your class. I want to ask how to solve the problem of investment that is not stable for our finance. You are asking about how the businessman's finances is not stable. Is that it? Yes. Okay, so businessmen, actually, we have um, several or various financial institutions that can help the businessman. So all they have to do is make a business plan and present this to financial institution as these financial institutions will, will verify this business plan and they will offer you funds needed for, your, for you to grow your business. So all you have to do is, yes, make, I know you are oriented with these business plans. So you have to make this, present to banks, the lending institutions, so whatever financial institutions available in your country, because when they say, when they see these business plans and it is very feasible, they will give you, they will offer you funds, and they will usually the the funds offered is very, is very what they call very flexible in payment for that for so the businessman will not be go into that that much, but will be able to rise from his financial difficulties. Okay, Miss. Thank you very much for your answer. Thank you. Hello, Harvis. Can I have one question, please? Yes. Sorry, I'm moving the uh, change. <laughs> Hello, Harvis. Um, Can I have yes. one question, please? Oh, yes, yes. Um, <laughs> Of course. Uh, hello, Mrs. Gladys, uh, nice to meet you. Uh, nice to see you. Yes, yes. Uh, nice to I want to. <laughs> I want to ask about. Um, I sometimes I feel uh, guilty for myself because I didn't have any saving. Uh, not 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 didn't have any saving but i have uh, a little saving uh, from my from my uh from, from my money from work and uh i often i'm feeling guilty about that uh how to build uh any confidence about that thing <laughs> because uh 
some from my friend is so they have um maybe man, uh, maybe money from saving so how to build a confidence because i have um daily needs so from work accommodation and i i use uh, actually i'm a backbone from my family too so how okay. how to build a, a confidence so like your confidence yeah like your money your confidence will also grow even with the smallest mm -hmm. amount try to save it doesn't have to be that big at the very beginning but you need to save savings grow day by day be patient don't be so don't feel so um unhappy just because you have a small savings uh -huh. it can grow diba? like i i mean i have explained earlier that those with bigger salaries although they have the, the potential to have a bigger savings but it doesn't mean that they are going to retire comfortably so i have explained that so what you're going to do is continue doing what you're doing as long as you save day by day penny by penny or a small amount peso by peso whatever it is it will grow in the future so just continue doing what you're doing as long as you do not have anybody to go that you're stuck upon just continue to do doing what you're doing right now if you can save some more the better if not just continue just save continue saving okay don't be don't be ashamed of what you save even if it's a small amount it is still savings okay okay Okay, thank you, Miss. Welcome. Okay. Nita, it is now. Okay. Uh, thanks for the answer, Doctor. Uh, we are before uh, because um, time is limited. Uh, I only choose one question more, and the question is from Fadli Kuncoro. Uh, for Fadli Kuncoro, can you open your mic and ask your question? Sure. Uh, good morning, Miss Gladys. Uh, I want to ask you something about what things we must to avoid when we want to manage our financial as student college and increase the income. Thank you. Can you please ask your questions again, please? Fali Kuncholo, doctor. Um, I'm sorry, can you please repeat the questions? I wasn't able to catch some of the words. <laughs> we have a little bit problem, technical problems here. Um, okay, Fadli, can you repeat your question? Sure. Uh, I want to ask you something about what things we must to avoid when we want to manage our financial as student college and increase the income. Thank you. Okay, I think if you have seen, I have one. I have some of the slides here about the spending pitfalls. We must avail, avoid that one, and all you must always consider the difference between between the needs and the wants. So needs, these are the things that we, these are the things that make us live. These are the basic necessities, and wants are those you just want these things, but they are, they are not really necessary. So for you, you are a college student and you are into business. You, I think your professors have already given you an insight of how to start the business. Like I have advised one of the, and like I have answered one of the questions earlier, you need to think of a business for you just because you're a student it doesn't mean that you don't know how to make your own business there are so many millionaires who started as students so what you're going to do is think what is the need right now right now here some of my students are other than selling online some of them are are they're actually into the soap making 
and the alcohol making here, they are taught by the school, by the university. So this is very good for the students, especially for us in the business. So on your part as well, try to make something, think of something for you to earn an income. So you can sell or you can be an agent. Others here are acting as an other students here are acting as an agent in the buy and sell of lands here. So you can also do the same. This can help bring income to you and your family. Okay, uh, thanks, Doctor, for the answer. Uh, Fadli, what, what is your, it is enough? Yes, it's enough for me. Thank you. Okay, um, because the time is limited, uh, so let me close this Q&A session. And thanks for Ms. Gladys Evidente for the answers. And thanks for your lecturing. We are very, very appreciating your lecturing. And as an appreciation for your lecturing, we have a certificate for you. Um, and let us show you the certificate uh, for the operator. Please take your time to show the certificate. Um, let, let us give applause for Ms. Gladys Evidente for this lecturing, and this is certificate from us to Ms. Gladys Evidente. Okay, I think it's now for um, show the certificate. We can close it. Okay. Then next, we are going to have uh, a, photo, a photo session. Uh, to the all participants, please open your camera and give the best smile you have. Because we are going to have a photo session for documentation. Okay, to the participants, please open your camera and give your smile, your best smile you have. Okay, um, uh, start from the first page in three, two, one. Okay, uh, next is the second page. Please open your camera. Okay, um, for the second page, for the second page in three, Two, one. Okay. Next is the third page. Give your best smile in three, two, one. Okay. Next, the fourth page. For the fourth page, um, give your best smile. And in three, two, one. Okay, next, the fifth page. Oh, the fifth page. Uh, can please open your camera? Okay, next, last page. Um, in three, two, one. Okay. Um, Oh ya, um, untuk untuk mahasiswa hari Sabtu jangan lupa untuk ikut perkuliahan. Oke, okay. um, I think it's now for photo session and next we are going to the closing of this event. And in the ending of this event, uh, before I close this event, uh, let me say thanks to Bina Yusani University Rector 
and thanks to Dean of Basnis Faculty of Bina Insan University, and thanks to our lecturer, Ms. Dr. Gladys Evidente, who gave us her knowledge about personal finance management. And as the master of ceremony, personally, I apologize if there is a mistake in this lecturing event. Thanks for all. I hope you enjoyed this lecturing. Have a nice day and see you on the next vacation. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Thank you, Bina. Thank you, Pak Gladi. Thank you, Ma. Thank you very much, Miss Gladys. Hope we can see next time, yeah, Miss Miss Gladys. Yes, ma'am. I'm very willing for the next time. You come to Indonesia or we come to Philippines? See you in the future. After. Yes, uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, Dean. Probably after the pandemic. Yeah. See you soon in the future. Yes, ma'am. See you too. Okay, uh, we can leave perhaps. Yes, thank you. Sure. 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 We can finish it. <coughs> Terima kasih semuanya. Terima kasih. Sama-sama, Bu Etika.